Today I thought I'd talk about vegan organic gardening. What is it? Does it work? And how does it differ from my approach? In the title of today's video, I refer to both vegan organic gardening and veganic gardening. My understanding is that there are differences between these two approaches, but people often use the terms interchangeably. And to keep things simple today, I'll only talk about what's common to both approaches and I'll use the term vegan organic gardening. Vegan organic gardening is very similar to organic gardening. Compost, organic mulch, green manures and cover crops are used to increase soil fertility and synthetic fertilizers and synthetic pesticides are not used. But they differ in one very important way. In order to avoid exploiting or harming animals, vegan organic gardeners don't use animal products and they don't use domesticated animals in the garden. For example, some of the common organic gardening products they don't use include bone meal, blood meal, fish emulsion, and animal manures. They avoid these products because they're typically byproducts of the fish, meat, and dairy industries, and they don't want to support these industries directly or indirectly by buying products that increase their profits. In addition, my understanding is that domesticated animals and their manures aren't used in vegan organic gardening. And though they may keep composting worms out in the open garden, they don't confine them to bins. Instead of manures and other animal-based products, they use cover crops, green manures, plant-based compost, plant-based fertilizers, and rock powders. There's also an emphasis on avoiding harm to animals when it comes to pest control. If birds, deer, rabbits, squirrels, mice, etc. are eating or damaging crops, they can be excluded from the garden with fencing or other barriers, but not killed. Regarding insect pests, as well as slugs, snails, and the like, I found conflicting information. Some sources say no pesticides are used in vegan organic gardening. Others say organic pesticides can be used as long as they target specific pests and don't kill beneficial insects. Okay, that's my understanding of the basics of vegan organic gardening. The next question is, does it work? Is it a viable approach for home gardeners, especially vegans, who want to garden in a way that's consistent with their values? The answer is yes. There is no doubt that soil fertility can be maintained without the use of animal products. Green manures, cover crops, mulch, plant-based compost and fertilizers, and rock powders help build the soil food web and can supply all essential and beneficial elements needed by plants. And it's possible in most cases to exclude larger animals from the garden using barriers and to manage insects, slugs, and snails without using pesticides. One reason I'm so confident that vegan organic gardening works is that it's so similar to my approach. I use cover crops, organic mulches, and I use compost that's mostly plant-based. And I don't use pesticides, bone meal, blood meal, or fish emulsion. And though I composted horse manure and fish waste from a sushi restaurant a few years ago when exploring the availability of free local resources for gardens, I haven't otherwise used these resources. The only other difference I can think of is that I add eggshells to the garden and I keep composting worms in bins. In addition to these few differences in terms of practices, I also have a different perspective on a couple of issues. All soil contains the remains and waste of billions of organisms deposited over millions of years. And though I agree with the emphasis on minimizing harm to animals, I see the return of manures and remains to the soil as part of nature, and I have no objection to it as long as I do it safely and I don't contribute to the suffering of animals. For example, when I composted fish waste from a sushi restaurant, I did it safely and I didn't contribute to the suffering of animals in any way because the restaurant didn't profit from what I did. I simply diverted a waste product from a landfill into my garden, decreasing pollution and increasing soil fertility in the process. Finally, I'd like to raise some concerns that I have about a few products that are often recommended to vegan gardeners in lieu of animal products. Now, of course, not all vegan gardeners are using these products, but I see them recommended often enough that I wanted to raise some concerns. First, rock phosphate is often recommended as an alternative to bone meal. I personally wouldn't use either product, but rock phosphate is a limited resource. Its mining creates a great deal of pollution, and the overuse of phosphorus fertilizers in the garden pollutes waterways and kills aquatic life. The good news is that most organic gardens that are amended with compost and mulch have more than enough phosphorus, and bone meal and rock phosphate simply aren't needed. Given the downsides, I strongly recommend a professional soil test before using any phosphorus fertilizer, including rock phosphate. 
I also wouldn't use kelp products, which are often recommended to vegan gardeners. Harvesting kelp from the ocean damages ocean ecosystems and kills aquatic life. And contrary to marketing claims, there's nothing special or magical about kelp. The nutrients in kelp are also available in other plant material. And the apparent growth simulating effects can be achieved with worm castings. And finally, I wouldn't use green sand, which is mined from the ocean floor. Again, out of concern for ocean ecosystems and aquatic life. Now I understand, as I said before, that not all vegan gardeners are using these products, but I see them recommended often enough that I wanted to raise these concerns about the damage they do to the environment and to animals. So yes, vegan organic gardening definitely works. It's very similar to what I do, and it's a great way for vegans to garden in a way that's consistent with their values. The only caveat I raise is to avoid the products I just described due to their negative impact on the environment and on animals. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos on how to grow a lot of food on a little land without spending much or working harder than you have to. The nutrients in kelp are also available in other plant material. And the apparent growth simulating effects can be achieved with worm castings.